Hallelujah, but it is good to be here. And, uh, you know, I thank Walt for, for, for changing my diapers, amen. And you guys just hang around. You're just going to have to get your diapers changed for a little bit, amen. And you're going to have to start taking a look at yourself. And what the, the, the sermon is and what we're talking about today is uh, Ecclesiastics. And it is 9-10, correct? Whosoever... Your hand find whatever whatsoever your hand finds to do. How many people know that your hand can find a lot of stuff to do around here? There's a lot of stuff to do. If you'll just have your hand up, your hand will find a lot of stuff to do. The problem is, is the hands up, and as soon as you find out what it is, then you don't want to do it. Just if you're at church on the street and you'll just have your hand up. This is what we're doing today. It's going to be okay. We're going to do this. I, I got my hand up. Amen? Because how many, of course, nothing ever changes around here. We don't, I mean, you know, scared this doesn't get in the way, that doesn't get in the way, or all the time. Am I right? Why well, I had my mind set on doing this, and now they said I got to do this. I ain't doing it. Let's take somebody like Pastor Bill. Am I right, Bill? Every day, if Bill didn't, wasn't, wasn't flexible, you'd be in big trouble, wouldn't you? Because this is what we had planned. Amen? This is what we had planned to do. And then I was all up for it. I even prayed and I even fasted a little bit for it. But now that's not what we're doing. <laughs> now I got to go do this, 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 and this. Woo! Hey, it's your training. You get trained here to not get your way. Okay? So, so therefore, if you're getting trained to not get your way, you have to understand that it's not your way, it's God's way. So therefore, you get right here at good old church on the street, we begin to get flexible about not getting our way, don't we? Because if we don't get our way, and I was one of the worst probably he's ever dealt with. Amen. Because I was <laughs> I, 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 you know, I always thought about that. I thought, my God, I wouldn't want to be Walt or Jim and have to deal with me, you know? Pastor Jim's the, the other guy that, 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 that helped pastor me and, and bring me up for, for three years. What I learned from Pastor Jim is, is how to trust God. I really did. Because it's, you know, he Jim just does his thing. But it remains and remains and remains and remains. Amen? Amen. And he just keeps, just, you know, people just, we got to learn how to trust God. Amen? I truly believe to have a happy life. Mankind must work. I really believe that. Because we need to have that sense of accomplishment. See, when you're just not doing anything and you just don't care and you're not taking it seriously, what's happening is, man, is that you're not being faithful. You know, you already should know. First of all, be aware of what you're in. It's called Church on the Street. And it's called, it ain't going to be your way. This ain't, this ain't Burger King, okay? <laughs> this ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Special orders do upset us, okay? <laughs> but <sighs> to grab hold of something, and this is what I learned when I was in, and, and Pastor would preach about it all the time. Just grab hold of it. Let go of it. I mean, don't let go of it. Keep your hand to the plow. Those that cannot keep their hand to the plow are not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And sometimes, man, you're just hanging on. You're just hanging on. I was talking to, to Chaplain Adorno just a second ago. I said, I remember when you first got here. I don't know if it was first, but he was going to take over this. <laughs> he said, my God, I've, I've, been in, I've been in ministry for a while. I've never seen anything like this. 
I've never seen a spiritual warfare go down like this. Ever. So, you, <laughs> there you go. He actually, how's your pants back then? You got, you probably, probably got holes in your knees, huh? You guys wonder why pastor's up at three in the morning over at the big church for two or three hours. Well, that, that's part of it. It's not just the work that you do. It's working for God. This is what Solomon is talking about. Whosoever your hand, whatever it finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you go. You're preparing yourself for now to be in ministry, which many of you are called to be in ministry. You just can't keep hold of the plow. You're called, you just can't keep hold of it. Because you won't trust God and you won't get on your knees. See, I never worried about, as mad as I got at, 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 at Walt, and I did, I got hot. I always knew his heart was right with God. Amen? Amen. I always knew that he had my best interest in hand, and I always knew, amen, that, that, that it's just me. I always knew I could just keep my big mouth shut and everything would be okay. I always knew I would just be quiet, pray, don't worry about it, know that I'm not responsible for it. He is. Amen. Amen? You're not. Take that pressure off of yourself. You ain't running nothing but your mouth, okay? That's it. It's called pride. 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 Let the old pastor have it. He's been, he had, my God, I've never seen anybody tangle with people like that. You know what I mean? God uses one person. Amen? Okay? And when everybody gets in line, we get called unity. Amen? But we fight and we buck. We, you, 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 gotta, you have to learn, man. You have to learn. This ain't the world. Amen? This ain't the world. Do you understand that? When I came in, I was a, a drug abuse counselor. I was actually the patient and then the counselor, then the patient, then the counselor, then the patient, then the counselor. <laughs> And I was going to tell him how to do it. I mean, he didn't budge, man. I thought, man, I've been able to manipulate people. I've been able to. Because you just, you just stand on the word. There's no manipulating, which people do, but there's no manipulating the word. The word is the word. The word of God is the word of God. And if you stand on the word, everything works out. If you'll wait and you'll hold on for just a little bit, it will work out. So we need that feeling of accomplishment that comes from a job well done, don't we? But if it's not seek ye first, the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, then it's just a bunch of vanity. And that's what Solomon said in verse 9 there. If it's not seek ye first the kingdom of God. And see, I, I, I didn't realize that because I thought it was all about Tim Booker. You know, I did. I'll admit it. You know what I mean? I come in this place and God needs me for this and God needs me for that and God needs me for this and I'm the greatest this, that, and that because that's how the world goes. Am I correct? That's what the world teaches us. You know what I mean? Whoever's got the most toys wins. And then you come here, and you find out that you can't take them to heaven. And you're only here for a little old 80 years, maybe, if you get lucky, maybe 100. But you know what I mean. You're not here for that long, and then you've got eternity to deal with. So what Solomon is talking about, he's not talking about just right now. He's talking about getting prepared now for heaven. Amen? Meaning that what we do has an eternal value. There's no better job in the world, 
I don't think, than sitting right here dealing with a bunch of people that are just like me. I really believe that. Just getting to be the, uh, a pastor and getting to deal with people. But there's all kind of stuff that goes wrong. You know? Am I, of course, nothing goes wrong around here, but there's all kind of stuff that goes wrong. And you can't just quit every time something goes wrong. If you don't take an earnest look at yourself and you don't work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, that means what would God have you do? What would the Lord have you do? You have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So what would God have you do? And what does the Word of God say to do? And if you go by this, it makes it so much easier to hang on to the plow. It makes it so much easier when you put your hand to something. Because you have to understand law and grace. Okay? When you begin to understand, one, that you didn't, you didn't just, because you're so great, you're going to get into heaven. <laughs> okay? It's not because you're so great. You're going to get into heaven because you have said, Lord, I want Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my house through the blood, through the cross. Not anything of my doing except for simply, I believe in you. That song, I believe in Jesus, amen. I believe he's the son of God. That's it. Take, your, take, take the load off with all your, all your bad deeds, everything. We all got them. We all, you know, I get reminded every day that I ain't made it. Amen? I get reminded every day that, hey, I don't know how far along you think you are, but you ain't as far along maybe as you think you are. Because if you were, <laughs> if you were as far along as... God has to do it. God has to intervene. When you're working for the Lord, you have, there has to be a point where you don't take your hand off as far as quitting, but you take your hand off as far as you doing it. And when you take your hand off as far as you doing it, then you just throw your... I mean, how many times do we have finances and we're like, you're either going to shut it down or you ain't. Somebody's either going to step in. Those guys are... Did anybody meet Gino and, and, and Jen while they were here training? They were the couple that were here. When I walked. They're up in Michigan, and I mean, they're fighting it out, getting stuff going, getting that house going. Well, finally, man, they, they got them a breakthrough. But you would, if I told you all the stuff that had, would happen, you would, well, you would think you were right here. It only takes about four people. Do you know that, Pastor? About four people, you can have the whole, <laughs> you can have all of it going on. Okay. Matter of fact, I think Pastor Zoe got to an argument with himself one time in L.A., okay? <laughs> so it really only takes one person. <laughs> Call me up. I said, Zoe, you're, you're by yourself, you know? <laughs> just believe me, it doesn't have to be 200 or 300 or 400. Just one, one or two is enough. Amen. Those guys will call me up and be like two people in the house. Rawr, 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 rawr. You gotta be kidding me. There's only two of you. <laughs> you know? That's all it takes. Because every, you know what the problem is? The problem is, is because everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you ain't dealt with it. Because every time something comes up and it's this and that and it's you just stay right there. Everybody will hold, they'll, they'll keep their hand to the plow for and you better do this and I don't like him and he's I ain't doing. It. They'll keep hold of that, you know, arguing and fighting and, and all the works of the flesh. I mean, hey, we got our hand there. We ain't letting go of that for nothing. But but when it comes to the things of the spirit. Amen? But when it comes to the things of the Spirit of the Lord, boy, we just can't, we can't do that because we, we, we got to be in control of this and this and this and this and this. Let me just, I wrote some of this down, so I'm going to read a little bit of it. But if it's not to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and let God give you what you need, uh, 
Praise God, I've been getting my paid. You guys, I'm going to talk about this for a second. When you work for God, he is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. Every bit of my stuff has been taken care of. My kids go to private schools. That's because of the less money I make and I can get the grants, amen? But they go to private schools. <laughs> amen? I drive a nice car. Praise God, I didn't for a long, long time. I do today. Amen? Uh, got some clothes, amen? I'm taken care of. We went up to, to Tucson about 17 years ago. Carlton actually went up there in 95. My man Carlton is the one who really started Tucson Church on the Street. So let's give Carlton a... Amen. His, his wife at the time had had a vision to do it, and uh, Carlton stepped in, Carlton and Chip, and uh, there was a period of time, I know, that I think Carlton went to Florida or something and then came back, and, and, but God had ordained it, amen? God had ordained it, and I remember telling Pastor Walt, I went in the office. Now, back then, I had hair down to here, okay? And I said, Walt, you know, Pastor, should, when I go up to Tucson, see, because he said, I don't think he was still thinking, you know, let's see if you go or not. You know what I mean? Which I don't blame you. That's the way I am, too. I mean, you know, everybody comes in. They're going to do this, 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 this. And about, what, 5% of them do it. Two. <laughs> and I, I, I said, man, you think I just could, should cut my hair and I should get? And I thought for sure, you know, Pastor would say, you know, because Pastor wears a suit on Sunday and, you know, but he's usually just kicking it. But I, I thought, well, I, I thought for sure he would say, yeah, Tim, you need to cut your hair and you need to look like a. A fine, outstanding young man. He said, Tim, if God's in it, you can grow your hair as long as you want to. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> the world versus the spirit. Amen? And that's what a lot of times what we run up against. So I've been taken care of. Right now we're in a little bit of a financial whatever. Not too much. We've been worse. We've been way, way worse. But you know what? God, that's why in the Old Testament, God would always have them make monuments of stuff. Even when they crossed over the, the Red Sea, God said, well, leave these rocks and get these out of the, the, the River Jordan so that it'll be a monument so they'll remember what I did. So the, that's why when we're, when we're carrying the cross, it's so that people will remember Jesus Christ and they'll remember what he did. When people are walking by and they are driving by, they see that cross. They ain't thought about Jesus, some of them probably for years. And I guarantee you there's some that break down right there in their car and go, oh, my God, am I that far away from you? Because that's how much power that is in that cross. So for some of you who are thinking about getting the ministry, but you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. I know one thing, you got a pastor that will get behind you. I know that much. I guarantee you, Pastor ain't going to tell you, well, yeah, save up 10 grand and then go. Because you'll never go. You know? You'll never go. He'll just say, hey, man, you know what? Go out there if he feels that, you know, you're ready to do it. That's the other part. You know what I mean? If you're ready to do it, then, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about all that. God's got some stuff for you to do. He's got a calling on your life. I believe that everybody that comes into church on the street, God's got some kind of purpose. God's got some kind of ministry. God's got something for you. But you will never achieve that unless you keep your hand on the plow. And you cannot keep your hand on the plow unless you humble yourself to the point of where you just don't think you can take it anymore. And when you don't think you can take it anymore, guess what, baby? You may have to take a little more. Amen? And when you don't think you can take it anymore, you may have to take just a little bit more. God knows where your breaking point is. God knows exactly where your breaking point is, and he will not give you anything that you can handle, that you cannot handle. There is no temptation that is beginning to you, all except for what is common to man. That means you ain't this super spiritual something, so you're going to get a little bigger temptation. And I just couldn't handle it because that was bigger than what he got. Nobody's ever thought of that, have they? Well, devil, you better bring the whole package.
kick down. Amen. You don't you don't want to pray prayers like that. <laughs> you know. But God's got it all under control. He's just waiting on you. Amen. There's a point where you have to wait. There's no doubt about it. But there's a point where you are proven faithful. And then it's let's get on to the next thing. I remember when I first got here, I was in charge of the steps at the White House. So you know what? I just said, you know what? Those are going to be the cleanest steps that anybody's ever seen. Amen. I had that wisp. I'm somebody, I'd be sitting down there and somebody would walk by and they'd get a little dot on that step. With that wisp broom, you know. Remember one time John hurled the vacuum cleaner down the steps. <laughs> I had to get into that. But I was sitting there and I was watching my steps, and all of a sudden this guy, John Brad, he just threw the vacuum cleaner down the steps. And I mean, it went boom, 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 boom. You all rascal, those are my steps. Lord, you're telling me he did that and I got to clean it up? Oh, no, 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 no. Somebody need to whoop him until he gets a whisk broom himself. I'm telling Pastor Walt. And we have this big old dude down here, Tracy. Walt actually called me from... from uh, Prescott and asked me to, to help him out for a little bit. And that guy was just walking around, and he was just bullying everybody. And just, you know, big old whirly, whatever, you know. Finally, old Pastor Mark turned around and said, Tim, when are you going to get involved in this? I said, well, I'm just I am, you know. Anyway, <laughs> you know uh, I said, look, I'm going to show you how to deal with this, okay? And I had to go up, and I had to get in the dude's face and say, you know what, dude? You ain't coming in the White House. Get your butt over to the deal. Da, 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 and I put him, and then I chapped him as he was walking. And the big old burly dude turned around and said, I'm telling Pastor Juan. <laughs> I said, Good. The point I'm making is that God put me over the steps. <laughs> Man. So I got my whisper room and all that stuff that John just cleaned it up. Amen. Just because it doesn't go how you want it to go, that doesn't mean that you can't be faithful. you got to stay faithful no matter what. <laughs> it, 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 I got it. You know, you're the biggest and you're the baddest and you're, you know. And that was one thing that, that, that I noticed when I came into church on the street. I mean, you know, there was like, I don't know, 20 of us or something. We went around and had a meeting and everybody just told each other how bad they were. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> okay. that walks on church on the street is worried about you whooping their butt, okay? They're not worried about it. So just let it go. Plus, you can't do it anyway. Because if you do it, you'll be out, amen? So ju just let all that go. Well, I'll come over there and I'll show him better not. That's called you doing it yourself. Amen? Why don't you let God walk over there? And, um, 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 get him in a, why don't you let God do it? Why don't you try hitting your knees and being humble and saying, God, please. Amen? God, please. 
God, please, I cannot do this of my own self. I don't want to do this of my own self anymore. I'm not going to do this of my own self. I realize that I've been saved by grace and mercy, and that's it. Nothing of myself. Amen? And when we realize that it's nothing of ourselves, it makes things much, 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 much easier. Much easier. You cannot do it yourself. You, but you got to stay, though. You have to stay no matter what. You have to stay. You have to stick. You have to say, God, I'm not going nowhere. When I took my trip to Vegas, I came back. There was a guy. His name was Robert Painter. And me and Robert came in the mission at the exact same time and went in the program at the exact same time. And I came back after tail between my leg, hair going all out to here. Beard out to here. Y'all know the old two weeks they took a shower and all that kind of stuff. And we were at the old McKinley Church. And I walked over. I'd only been back for a day, right? And I walked over to Robert and I said, hey, Robert, what's going on? And he just looked at me. <laughs> Do I know you? Dude, Sim. Oh, Booker, what's up, man? Hey, me and Trish got married. And Trish was a good-looking girl. Amen. <laughs> Godly woman, amen. <laughs> Pastor Walt gave us this house over here. I'm up over the whole property, and I'm up over the children's ministry, and I'm up over this, and I'm up over that, and I'm up over this. And I'm standing there. Huh. I can't talk to you right now. My kids are doing this. I got to go get them. Ah, you know. And I'm standing there going. And the Lord took that opportunity to speak to my heart. This guy didn't go through anything that you didn't go through. The difference is, is he stuck and you didn't. The difference is, is I was ready to bless you. Matter of fact, Walt couldn't even believe it when I took off. He's like, you sure? I thought that guy was getting it. You know what I mean? I had a little ways to go. Still do. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, not, there's nothing that happened here, okay, that with this guy that was any different than what you dealt with. The difference is he stuck around for the blessing and humbled himself, and you got all prideful and left. Just the same old stuff, you know, people saying this. and I mean, there's no rumors ever going on around here about nobody, so y'all are, are all good, amen. Nobody ever feels like not doing this and not doing that, but you got to do it anyway. I know, man. Same old stuff. And then I made a decision. I will never let go of the plow again. Amen. I don't care who did what. I don't care who's smoking crack in the bathroom. I don't care who's smoking in the alley and they're up trying to give a testimony or tell how great they are or a leader or a pastor or whatever they are. I don't care who's doing it. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not responsible for any of it. God, I'm not letting go of the plow no matter what. <laughs> Amen. Because, you know, when you get into all this old feeling sorry for yourself, nobody else feels sorry for you but you. You may even have somebody come by and comfort you. Oh, so-and-so. Yeah, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. Oh, so <laughs> Man, when they walk off, they're off to their next thing. Amen? <laughs> Nobody's feeling sorry for you. They're not. You can't pity your way into God giving you more stuff to be faithful over. You can't pity your way into it. Amen? All right. Let me read just the rest of this since I wrote it down. I just get to some important parts and I can't miss it. You know what I mean? Like the paycheck part. But I have been getting it for 20 years. All right. He's a warder of those who seek him diligently. Hebrews 6.11. And believe that he is. There's no, there's no better life than just doing things unto the Lord, 100%. Colossians 3.23 says, He is a rewarder of them who seek, who, who do the things unto him. We do things unto him, not unto man. That makes things ten times easier, right? Amen? In other words, we will take care, we will take care 
we're going to take care of the ones that serve him. Amen? We're going we're gonna to take care of the things, I'm sorry, that, that we are over that he has given us. Okay? All the rest of everything else, I'm going to keep reading, is vanity. Vanity means life without God. Amen? And you can, y'all are going to do what you want. I learned this from the old pastor. You can get up. And, but as for me and my house, amen? You can do what you want. You're not taking me out of my stuff. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I will serve the Lord no matter what is right or whatever you think is wrong or whatever you think is this or whatever you think is that or whoever's smoking crack in the bath. I don't care. Amen? We will serve the Lord. We, am I right? Are we going to serve the Lord? Yeah. Luke 9, 9, 62, put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Matthew 25, 23, he who is faithful over a little will be faithful over much. We want this, we want that, we want this. But as soon as somebody, it's all fun and games till you clean the steps and somebody throws the vacuum cleaner down the, <laughs> down the stairs. You know? And you got to clean it up. I'm telling Pastor Walt. <laughs> All right. The work has to be done through our faith, through our faith that God, that God will do it. Amen? Not us. You cannot, you will not stay in this, you will not be here, you can't, unless you do it through the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just real quick, turn over to Romans 8-2. Romans 8-2. The point I'm making is you can't do it yourself and you can't do it under law. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. Not you. The law of the spirit. From the, it's made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen? Through the cross of Christ. This means that if the believer attempts to, if the believer attempts to live for God by any manner other than faith in Christ and the cross, he's doomed to failure. If it doesn't go through the cross, God doesn't recognize it. If it doesn't go through the blood of what Jesus did, he doesn't recognize it. The work was finished. You have no more work to do. It's done. Amen? Therefore, in the eyes of God, I am justified by my faith and my faith alone. Amen? And I have peace with God. God, you have peace with God. A lot of times we don't hang on to stuff because we think God's up there all mad at us and, you know, we shouldn't do this anyway because, you know, God's up there. As soon as I can do this, he's just going to put me to the curb anyway. Well, he ain't put your old butt to the curb yet. You might want to consider that. He's with you. If God is for you, no one can be against you. So therefore, when you get ready and you put your hand to the plow and you put your hand to something that you need to do or you know that God has you to do, you do it with all your might. You do it with everything you got. But you say, it's not, it's not, like, like Pastor's always talking about, you know, he's trying to grow a beard. You can't. He can not water coming. We're not talking about physical. We're talking about spiritual. We're talking about his grace and his mercy and his love. Physically, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Try hanging on in prayer. Try hanging on and going to the cross for everything. Try hanging on to the, with the blood of Jesus. Amen? Try hanging on and understanding a little bit more about grace 
and law once you understand that you can't do it yourself. I'm going to let go of it physically, but I will not let go of it spiritually. I'm going to let go of it physically, but spiritually, I'm going to give it everything i got as far as prayer and saying, God, it's yours, and me humbling myself, and me going by what this says. If you'll just go by what this says, amen, you'll find yourself in the position of being in God's will, and life will be much easier, and you will accomplish things that God I remember Walt was talking about one time about being astonished. Just wanted to be astonished. You know what I mean? By God and what he does. There's situations that come up. I'm going to quit in just a second. There's situations that come up in your life, and God will have them come in your life just so you'll know that he's the one who did it, not you. Amen? But we don't let go, and we never, ever quit. Amen? Amen. That's it.